Well, 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 we are back. We, um, as usual, we're like, oh, we should get to do another one. And then it got delayed and delayed and delayed. We thought we'd wait till Monday. What a great <laughs> way to pop Monday-itis and um, start the week off with some really cool conversations. Um, something that we've been feeling into for quite a while. We do that, we think about it for a bit, and then we pop it out on here to hear what you guys think. Um, I know we've been pretty quiet, but we've just been, we've just life. been living life. In. Life, life, life. Um, but I think now's a really important time to come back in and start having these really cool conscious conversations because mm. um, we don't want anything to be of the same narrative. We want everything to be about all different sorts of relating, of connecting, of conversing, thinking. I think positivity is a really big one. Um, I would say in the last week, pretty much in everywhere in Australia, everyone's felt real heavy energy. I'm speaking for myself. It's felt heavy. It's felt yuck. Um, <laughs> nonsense going on. Yes. Um, so we just want to jump out of that for a little bit and explore. And we've been, Sharon and I have been talking about what we're talking about today, about the number seven. Number seven. We've been talking about this for a little bit um, and it seems to come up a quite a lot. And, and obviously when you're living in echo chambers as we do, it's sort of, you relate to people in, that are talking about the same sort of stuff. So we hope we inspire some thoughts, some comments, some feelings from you all. We'd love to hear yeah, either comment below or um, messages afterwards, which a lot of you do, and I love you so much for that. Like a lot of you guys will watch this when we do it live, or you'll watch the replay and comment and share. So we really hope you do that. And um, one, one thing I would mention with all of these lives is that there's no agenda here. We're not trying to force anything down the throat. This is conscious contemplation. It's not even a conversation. Mm. We're, we're chatting. We'd love to hear back from you. We're not here, we're not saying we're right or wrong, but um, we'd like to open the dynamic to look outside the status quo, look outside the square, and just go, ah, just because the rest of the world's done it like this, is that working specifically for me? And I would say that for for the way I do things, it's not necessarily going to work for you, or the way you do things is not necessarily going to work for me because we're all unique individuals. And, and my, my thought along those lines is, this isn't like a gospel. We're not trying to stick this down your throat. We're not trying to. We're just we're just triggering thoughts. That's it. Yep. And um and 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 hopefully triggering more thoughts of your own. So I think I'd love to dive into seven. Seven really hit me over the years, and seven is something that I to tried me. to avoid for most of my life. I tried to pretend it wasn't real. I tried to pretend I wasn't actually living seven. Yeah. And so maybe we'll discuss what a seven, we'll yeah. discuss well, multiple ways of how a seven as, is relevant. As we go into it, to be honest, in a lot of my life, I didn't realise that I was settling for a seven. Um, so this is what we're sort of talking about in a lot of these ways. For, for me, there was a lot of my life that, and what, what we mean by that is, is it a seven out of ten? Uh, and, and from a lot of people, you think that's okay, or it is okay for a lot of people. For me, seven felt like I was settled. And a lot of the time, I didn't realise that that's what I was doing. I was just going through the motions, living unconsciously, and having this space. Going, yeah, I'm comfortable. Yeah, why should I deserve more? Why should I want more than this? When and comparing things to the way the people in my echo chambers were doing, the people that I was speaking to and spending time with, I had a great life, and I've and and I've strived to have a good life. I say a good life because a seven is good. But seven me, is good. So I'll, I'll describe yeah. maybe a little bit more about what a seven actually is. So seven in a scale of one to ten. So three is obviously pretty crap. One, two, three, four, five is pretty crap. And yet a lot of humans out there live this life where a five is still manageable. A five though, you still know that's usually an abusive relationship. That's usually a relationship where um, it's very single-sided. That's quite often, an abuse can be male, female, emotional, physical, any of that stuff. Five is usually where you're like at that tipping point. You're probably on your way out anyway. Same with a six. And Seven's really dangerous. And, and, and it's not just about relationships. No, this it's literally sits everything. in to every part of your world, whether it be your housing situation, whether it be your job, whether it be Lifestyle. just the way you actually feel about anything. When you slip into that space, that that number, whatever it happens to be that gives you this feeling of where you, where you are, it gives you room to understand what you're actually doing, where you're feeling. So I feel like for... We'll go, we'll go, we'll go relationships, yep. lifestyle. Job. Job. Yep, cool. Cool. Someone's ringing me. So Call you back. If you are feeling into this and you go, look, my, life, my life's okay, have a look at what number. Give it a score out of 10 and think, do you only deserve that? 
Do you, is, are you actually really, really ecstatic with that and that being your existence in life? And if you really genuinely are, great, go for it. Enjoy that. Don't let anyone change any different. I'm still going to question mm. that. So I myself, I've been in, like many of you, multiple relationships. And we'll start with relationships because I mm. think it's the easiest for you all to relate with. Um, I've been in quite a few relationships where I was like, it's good. I'm okay. The connection, the sex, the conversation, the day-to-day -day relating of my relationship is safe enough, okay enough that I can get by, that I can exist, that I can push through. I can just get through today and tomorrow will somehow be better. I can just get through this week, this year, this month, and I will somehow, it'll, it'll be okay. I can, I can do this. And because it's sitting in that point of your discomfort where you know you will live. You know you can get through it, but we're not thriving. We're not stimulated. We're not sitting in a point of um, connection, awareness, Expanded. love, expansion. Mm -hmm. You're not bringing, you're not, you're not bringing more to the plate and they're not bringing more to the plate. You're just coexisting 98% of the time. And I really, I know this came up quite a few times for me in my life where I was like, no, I'm not in a seven. I remember being at a Calvin Coyle event and also at some other chicks event. And this came up and they were like, who's living a seven? And I was like, not me. I'm totally all in. And then when I really sat there and went home and pondered it for a while, I realized I'm living a freaking seven. I'm living a freaking seven. I'm settling. I know the person that I'm with, the life that I'm in is enough for me to be satisfied, to, for me to be status quo, for me not to rock the boat. I'm living comfortably. There's food on the table. I have a good place. I have all these things. I'm comfortable. But I wasn't alive. And there was constantly getting to this point. And the problem with a seven is that you can make do until suddenly you're at breaking point and you're not making do and suddenly you're having a meltdown. Do you think that the comparison and comparing ourselves to others and their sevens is relatively dangerous? Well, of course. I mean, because it's always the perspective of the person. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like this is what ends up happening. You look at other people's life and go, ah, oh, yeah, look, my relationship's not the best, but I mean, it's better than Sandy and Brian. I mean, oh, yes. And when you look at them and, and you know, they, they turn up and they, want, they look miserable every day, and I feel like this is what happens. We compare ourselves so much to other people and, and you go, oh yeah, so I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. But never actually question for yourself how good it is. Mm -hmm. For me personally, yeah, I've been through all of these things. There's been massive amounts in my life where I go, yeah, I'm doing really well in comparison or I'm doing okay as society will see it. Reality of it was it was a slow mind numbing death. There was large chunks of this where I'm going, a seven felt like blowing my brains out. It wasn't enough. And and you get, for me, I don't know about anyone else, but I could withstand this for a time. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you do. We all you can. hit the breaking point and you're like, this isn't enough. My soul, me, my everything that I have deserves and wants more than this. And I think that's a massive key is remembering we can all make do, but at some point your soul, your every fibre of your being goes, but I think there's more. Yeah. But I think there's something missing. But I feel like I'm not quite getting it. I feel like my life is missing something. And everyone cannot deny the fact that you will get to this at some point. Mm -hmm. If not, you're probably dying. Mm -hmm. Because this is the point. So many people will live out this existence where they're sitting inside of a seven going, it's okay, it'll be enough. It's okay, I have to do this because I chose it. I have to do this because I allowed it. Whatever it might be, and the conversation today will go two ways. What is a seven? How are you living a seven? Realizing you're not meant to settle for a seven. A seven is a mind-numbing death, yeah. and something that you are scapegoating so that you can't, so that you don't, so that you choose not to take control of your life again. Because that's the quickest scapegoat is to blame the seven, to blame the situation, to blame well, the other person. And this comes back to a whole lot of things we've talked about. We've talked about balance. We've talked about awareness. We've talked about growth and consciousness. One of, one of the things here that really needs to, to really settle into is taking ownership and own every single step and make this life work for you. Don't let life happen around you. Don't let life happen to you. Don't be a victim. Give yourself the opportunity. Now, when, for me, when I was sat in a seven, life was happening around me. And I'm like, oh, there's only so much input that I can have. I'm steering the vehicle, but you know, like I can't handle the, the, the roads. I'm on the road. That has nothing to do with me. When you're more conscious, 
when you have that sort of space where you're taking ownership for it and you're really aware, now you can elevate for me. Now I can elevate my life and grow further and deeper into that conscious space where things start to work a whole lot better, they move a whole lot easier, and again, we're making life work for us. Again, when you start being aware, I'm gonna, I keep saying you, when I started being aware of things and I'm a long way from being there, my life started elevating because I started the elevation process. Now this is a rocky road. This, this can go, yes, I'm settling for a seven, but sometimes you're, you're going, no, I want better than this. And then you end up having to regress to go through the emotions and the way to actually get out of it, to change it, to move. Because if you're not happy with your job, job's perfect example. If you're not happy with your job, Quitting is damn hard, and that's why we stay in the seven, because quitting and moving and change can be damn hard. I quite often say to people, quit your job if you're not happy. That doesn't take away from the point that it's not an easy transition. You transition for this temporarily, this too shall pass, and move into something better, or make better decisions. Creative with your mind, think differently outside the space, so this gives you the opportunity to have what you want. We talk to people often and they go, oh, you're off to work tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's great. And I'm, I hope you love it. Don't complain about it because it is your choice mm. to think the way that you do. We can take this and move in a space where you can go, you know what? I actually don't want this. And it is going to be hard to change. It is going to be hard to make the change. It might take time. Changing from a 7 to a 10 is not an overnight experience. It's commitment. It's also outside our comfort zone. That's the other thing. How many of you have heard the saying... Um, let me get it right in my head, I've thought about it four times now, um, that you won't change until you hit rock bottom. It takes to hit rock bottom to actually make a change. You're not in enough pain to change. And that is the biggest danger of a seven, is often you can live nearly your whole life in this seven zone, not quite in enough pain, not quite hitting rock bottom enough to desire to change, to realize you can change, to choose to change. And it's a very, very deadly zone. And that's why we chose to make this the topic of today is because so many are living out a seven in relationships, a seven in the house you keep, a seven in the family connections you have, a seven in your job. And it's deadly yeah. right now. It's so deadly. Oh. There is so much going on in the world where so many of us have to sit there and go, this pain has been in my life for so long and I'm ready to change it. But you have to step outside of the seven zone. The seven is also how much effort you're putting in as to how much effort you're receiving from the world. That is your responsibility to realize is that the seven is what you've chosen and allowed. So taking responsibility for that aspect, grasping it by the freaking balls and going, enough. <laughs> um, yes, yes, enough. You have to choose to... Um, to own that and realize that that was your choice and now you need to choose more. And it's yeah. gonna take more energy. It's going to take more effort. It's going to take pain and fear and emotion and thought and heart and gut coercion. It's gonna take your whole fire of your being to step out of the seven because it's such a deadly zone of living. It's, it's hard. And this, this is where it comes back to with conscious living and everything. I'm going to use a couple little things here. Feeling is what you get to thinking the way you do constantly. So how you're feeling is determined by your thoughts. And you've got to keep those thoughts vibrating higher to continue getting better. That being said, also your decisions today define your tomorrows. Now what your life, or my, what my life is like, I have the life that I want because I choose it every damn moment. Now, if you just go through the motions, and, and realistically, the biggest drama we see in life at the moment is people living and valuing life over living. Mm. I don't give a shit if I die tomorrow because I've lived a very good life for the time and I'm very, very comfortable with that. We're all going to die, just mm. in case you didn't know. We're all going to die. So you get so damn comfortable with it that you take the risk, that you buy the thing, that you spend the money, that you live the life. Now, as, as you're taking the risk, pe people, and I have done it a lot, is not necessarily step into ownership and consciousness. And what that means is knowing that every single thing you do, having sit, sitting down in the afternoon and not going for a jog. Well, you know what? I don't, I don't jog, don't, just don't get me wrong. But my point <laughs> is, if you sit down in the afternoon and you're, and you're not doing anything, you come home, sit on the lounge, and you do this every damn day, and then, then wonder why you're 30 kilo overweight, all of those decisions every day, this is your choice. If you've got... Um, back problems, knee problems, health problems, all those things. These are all your choices the whole way down the track. 
because you didn't make the good choices day by day by day. Moment by moment, in fact. Yeah. Every moment, and this is actually um, one thing you can look up the, the meaning of, is the Kaizen process. The Kaizen process is understanding that we have a 30 second decision window, then another 30 second decision window, and yet we hold so much judgment upon each and every 30 second decision window that we forget that there's another one to follow it, and you can actually shift and change in that next 30 seconds. So just because this 30 second decision was a bad one, doesn't mean your next one has to follow suit. You can break that in any 30 second increment that you choose. And remembering the Chinese said that um, the war was won because everyone understood that it was this 30 second decision upon the next 30 second decision and letting go and burning the bridges and moving forward. And I feel like seven comes into that conversation so much because I realize seven is existing and allowing the situation to evolve around them. Mm -hmm. Not, and not having for them. And not and having that's for exactly them. The point. And then there is the Kaizen process of rising together, burning the boat, stepping forward, raising your consciousness and choosing to live out an existence that is more. And I get it. Some of you are going, I've got kids. I've got a husband. I've got mortgage. I've got that. You chose to enable the structure, to enable the pillars of your seven setup, Right? You chose the pillars at which your seven was set upon. So you chose them. So you can unchoose them or you can choose to love them in a different way, to see them in a different way, to work them in a different way, bit by bit, increment by increment. We're not saying drop everything tomorrow, mm. leave your marriage, leave your children, leave your husband, all the things, what, wife, whatever. What I'm saying is, what are you conscientiously putting into those things each and every moment? How are you showing up for every freaking aspect of your life how are you showing up? What are you contributing? What are you thinking and believing about all of those aspects? Check yourself before you wreck the situation because guarantee 98% of the time we stop giving and contributing. Then we project it upon everybody else and everything else and detach from the ownership of what we've allowed and what we've created. So there's a big part of the reason why we settle for sevens and it's the, the, the mental game that the next moment is going to be better than this present one. That this is a means to an end. It's okay, I've only got to do another two years of this, I'll do another year of this job, and another then I'll week. be here. Another week or another month, whatever it happens to be, your relationship, I've only got to hang out in a relationship to the kids or older. You're, 18, you're wishing your life away and, and it becomes a means to an end. This is a dangerous game to play when anything you do, it doesn't matter what it is, becomes a means to an end. Because all of a sudden, you start settling, you become unconscious and it becomes a pattern. Mm -hmm. So soon, it doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what it is. If you're at a meeting, a bloody parent and teacher meeting at school and you're going, fuck me, I just can't wait till this is over. Don't wait, get up and walk out mm -hmm. because it's mind numbingly stealing your life and you're creating a pattern to settle. You're going, yeah, it's okay, it's only another hour, which is making the next moment somehow better than this present one. And too bad if you died in that moment. And this is a big one. If you are going, yeah, righto, righto, you're in a relationship, you go, oh, yeah, I'll give it another six months, see how it goes. Gee whiz, really take some stock, take in here, because if you died in a month and you hated every moment of it, was it worth it? You might not get another shot at this. And the other thing to remember is you've then just wasted their time too. Their time too. So the other part of a seven is don't be selfish. Big, big shout out to, to a mate of mine, uh, Alex, there, and he constantly said to me, he says, the worst thing we can do is waste someone else's time. <clears throat> now, I know a lot of people in their relationships and what they are doing is wasting someone else's time. Shit, I've been responsible for it, not even realizing because it was easy, it was whatever else it was, where I was at that level, and it was okay, but it was the most disrespectful thing to do to waste someone else's time, and I can only apologize for that. So, with all of this, just ask yourself the question every day and in everything you do, is this good enough for me? And when I say that, not good enough. Is this excellent? Is this the best that I can get? And if it's not, work out a way to change it. That doesn't mean leaving your job. That means maybe changing your mindset when you go in there. That doesn't mean leaving your partner. Maybe it means taking them on date nights twice a week. Actually maybe it participating. means participating. Actually putting effort in because nothing good ever happened that was easy. No. That's the biggest part for me. Anyway, I think that's probably a good little run on that. That is. Um, and in saying that, um, we do want to jump in and quickly speak about the uh, liberation event uh, yeah. that we've got coming up, the liberation series. We've made a few changes. Those that have made contact already about the event, we've given you those changes. If you've been contemplating or you might have seen a post about it, 
um, jump on and have a look at the website and then give me a buzz and I'll let you know the changes. Um, but ultimately, seven was how I lived my life when I was an award-winning chef. Seven was how I lived my life when I was working the mind earning 90, 90K a year. Seven was how I was living my life as a personal trainer and bodybuilder. It took for me to understand my biology, for me to understand where the world was keeping me stuck in a seven because no one else understood my biology. Taking back ownership, taking back control, taking back charge of your life is done by understanding you, your biology, your mind, your emotions, your physicality, and how you're meant to show up in the world day by day, moment by moment, because you are not the same. You this are all me. different. So empowering yourself to understand the truth of your biology and how you get to show up in the world is next level. And this is what we're inspiring and hoping to give people little pointers to to find this within their own self on, on the event that we're running the Liberation Series. Um, really excited about it, really keen to get, get people moving and help people change their life for the better. That's what this whole thing is actually about for us. Um, shoot us a message, ask some questions. We have got the stuff on the website there as well. But this really, not only it's going to give you indicators on how your biology works, it's going to give you a lot of mindfulness, it's going to give you an understanding how to incorporate these and integrate them into the world, plus hang out with some people that are hopefully elevating a little bit higher and, and essentially any time you spend time with people that are working on themselves, you feel a whole lot better. So this is about growing and stepping away from that seven and seeing pointers in the wave on how you can change and elevate, invigorate, and uh, change your life. Awareness. Yes. Love you all, guys. Have a good day. Cheers.